And then here, there's a chain with a turnbuckle. And then that goes to an eye hook that's put through the bulkhead. There's one of those on each side. And here's the other one, turnbuckle, the chain. I can't see it, but it goes. I assume it goes to an eye hook. And then here's the side. And that one's got a crack too. And then there's another crack. One window forward too. So far I've checked three cylinders on here. I'm gonna short I'm gonna run it and short them out in a minute, make sure they're all firing on this side. Um light but the 0 0.017 is super loose here and it's not even supposed to fit but then on this side it doesn't fit like it so and the other uh, two that I've checked also besides this one uh, same thing one side it fits one side it doesn't um, the 0 0.015 is supposed to fit so it's just it's definitely gonna need a, a tune-up on here too. Deepest part, so it's good. I hope so. Oh, yay! <laughs> I don't think you're ever going around on anything other than flat ground. You go ahead and turn it over. This cylinder is really wet. It's just be easier if I was level with it. It won't work out. When you put oil in it, what oil did you put in? Uh, Rosella, that 1540 diesel. Okay, so, so you never want to put a multi-grade in here. Um, go, ahead, go ahead and keep turning it over. He had left a quart of it in there and he didn't that tell was, me. That was probably for the generator. I doubt he's got 1540 in here. You need us run a straight 40 weight in it. Okay. I didn't know and I thought, it, well, I was at that point where I grabbed yeah. it. No, well, it, you it, it, when, when, you're, when you're, no, it's hard to find on the road. I was going to so. say, I didn't think I even could get it on the road. Yeah. Uh, any oil is better than no oil. Right. And then, but yeah, it should always be the 40 weight. Is it like some of the old engines that need zinc? It, it has to do with the ash content because it's two stroke. But yeah, hang on a second. Stop right there for a second because okay. I can just see how much oil just came pouring down off of the rings on there. Um, go real slow, just a little bit more. Okay. And even the top of the piston is very wet. Keep going. Keep going. Just a touch more. Touch more. I go backwards just a hair. Okay, we'll leave it right there for now. Well, now that he's here, um, we weren't going to be doing any engine work on this thing, but uh, he's got some engine problems uh, coming here. Uh, it started smoking and sounding differently. So we're going through it now, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. It's definitely something on this side of the engine. Uh, we pulled the inspection covers. Um, as you saw, one of those uh, liners is really wet inside. So it could be oil control ring, or it just might, that might be fuel washing down. Uh, we're getting ready to compression check it here in a little bit, and we'll see how that goes. 
Um, I tried shorting the injectors out. I did not hear a distinctive difference on that one, um, but that doesn't mean that the necessarily the compression is the problem. So we're going to figure that out. Uh, it's a beautiful bus. Um, it unfortunately, it has this horrible exhaust leak that started on it, and it's really hard to hear what's going on. But we know that it's definitely out of tune. Uh, and some other things that we're going to go through and, and address on it here too. Um, these belts are pretty loose. But uh, first things first, we got to figure out what's going on with the engine there. Uh, coming up, there's a big hill in uh, Kentucky coming into Elizabethtown as you're coming south on I-65. Um, he should have downshifted on that hill and he did not. He thought maybe the automatic transmission would do it on its own. He didn't know about lugging on these engines. Uh, it slowed him down to right around 41 miles an hour, I think is what he said. Um, and that was just a too low of an RPM, too much heat trying to push up that hill. Yeah, that's a real critical thing. I've, I've shot a video of me going up and down that hill multiple times, uh, just showing you know, how I have to down, even I have to downshift with, with my propane injection on there. Um, but you got you to gotta keep the RPMs up on these things. You can't lug them. Uh, the oil, the engine oil, does a lot of the cooling on them too. So as your RPMs slow down, uh, you're not getting as much oil squirting up in those pistons. On the back side of the pistons, they're cooled. There's a uh, like a nozzle on the top of the piston rod that sprays the inside of the pistons with oil the whole time, keeping them cool. When you start to lose that, the pistons get really hot. They expand and they grab the liners, either gall them or crack them a lot of times too. But I didn't see a crack. That's a good sign. I couldn't see any obvious scoring inside the piston there. So we're going to go here. Now, there is an extra radiator that the previous owner had mounted on here. It's a beautiful radiator. But then he disconnected the electrical lines to the pump. Um, it would just be a great thing to keep going all the time. You can't have too much cooling on these things. So that radiator is a great idea. And I, I recommend you hook it back up and use it. The thermostats will do the controlling that they need. So the cooler you keep the coolant that's fed to the engine, you know, you're just that much further ahead in the game of cooling. Um, unfortunately, that radiator sucks because I got to get to the valve cover over there and normally that's the easy side to get to it is not going to be the easy side to get to this time so it's nice to have especially not, now that it's not used it's in my way but uh, we're gonna have to get to it I, I it definitely needs a tune-up when I had the feeler gauges in there all the the valves were all over the place the, the settings on them and I hadn't even checked the injectors which I assume they're probably the same so uh, and it's not just going to be like that on one side and not on the other. So I think it's got 40,000 miles on the rebuild. It's probably never been tuned up after that. So that's just wear and time uh, would be my guess. Nineteen fifty-three, they said. That is beautiful. Cool. So we're gonna adjust these brakes. I don't know if you can see here that they actually stick out further than the drum. There's like a lip on them. So we're gonna go ahead and get the brakes adjusted. He does have spring brakes on the tag axle, which is good. And we have a leaky seal over on that side. It's gonna be loud. <laughs> okay. All right, you ready? Yep.
going after uh, this leaky wheel seal on here. And luckily this one's been upgraded here with the Allen head. So these come out a lot easier than the flathead screws. That's pretty moist. So we're working on it here. Uh, we went ahead and, and bypassed the injector on that cylinder. So no fuel goes to that cylinder. So it stopped the smoking. It no longer smokes there. Um, I've given them, you know, 95% is what I think his chances are of making it back home without a major engine issue. He's already driven over 100 miles with it down a cylinder and nothing major happened. Um, bypassing the cylinder, the oil's not getting diluted with the unburnt fuel and that kind of stuff too. So uh, I think that he's going to be okay with that. Um, but no guarantees. He has the option to leave it here where I could tear into it. I told him it'd be a, f a couple of weeks before I could get to it and it might be a month before it was done. Um, but I told him, you know, I didn't want to promise that. I gave him a window of four to six weeks just to make sure. Uh, but I don't think that really works with his schedule. So uh, he's gonna have me come up to his shop over the winter time. He's got a big heated shop that he'll have it in and I can do the work in the, in the shop. Um, just kind of cautioned him that, you know, if it does break down, that the tow bill could be more than what the repair bill would be to replace the cylinder kit in it um, and he did call this morning then and verified that he does have towing insurance on his to on his insurance so that's good uh, so we're trying to make the you know the best decisions for him and on the time schedule it'll work better for him too so um, seeing as how he didn't realize a loss of power on it what's well, a new bus to him so um, there's a lot of hills and stuff around here too so now he knows how to drive a little bit better and hopefully we'll be good uh, we got the new exhaust pipe came in, so we're getting ready to finish fabbing that up. So we'll get rid of that exhaust leak on there too. Um, working on the wheel seal. The wheel seal was supposed to get delivered this morning and it hasn't shown up yet. Um, and we had a voltage regulator because the alternator voltage regulator is not working. Uh, when the alternator was tested uh, without the regulator, it, was, it would produce power. So that ended up getting shipped to the wrong zip code. Uh, a number was... Uh, three was changed to an eight in the zip code on UPS. So uh, we're not sure when that's gonna show up now, uh, but uh, just get into this wheel seal here, do some more adjusting on the brakes and that kind of stuff. And then we'll get this exhaust back on. And uh, I think he'll be hitting the road uh, sometime tomorrow. His tools, check the air and all those duels. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Well, he's got a long, hard ride in old Lenny the Silver Sides. Get that bus grease monkey on the road. Well, he's got that hammer down and that 47 hound. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. up engine door watch that bus grease monkey do his thing 30 years behind that barn cause it don't run worth a darn watch that bus grease monkey make it sing he knows in detroit there's no doubt upside down and inside out it's that bus grease monkey don't you know saving buses far and wide in that old blue silver sides it's that bus grease monkey don't you know He's moved his family to the hills of Tennessee. Watch that bus grease monkey make his home. Bring him buses back to life with the help of his dear wife. Watch that bus grease monkey get it done. When he travels town to town working on them old greyhounds, it's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide in old Lenny the Silver Sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know?
Santa Claus, Christmas, Monkey, don't you know? 